We chose the competition route because we wanted to open up the opportunity internationally for architects to come and, and work in Wakefield. And uh, we went through the RIBA uh, because that was the best way to ensure that we had that international attention, if you like. They duly delivered on that and we had expressions of interest from 111 architects, but that included architects from Japan, mainland Europe, United States and further afield as well from South Africa and Australia. For us that was a really high quality and impressive response. That led on to a really strong long list and then a really, really high quality short list. I think the competition process was attractive to us because it ensured that we were very clear about what our brief was, what, what it is that we wanted to, to create here in Wakefield. Um, so, you know, we, we followed the steps in the right way. We drew together a very good panel to make the decision. And the RABA also provided us with very helpful advice. So all of that, it, it brought a, a knowledge of architecture, a knowledge of architects, you know, in terms of what architects were doing, what they were able to offer us, and enable us to make a very well-informed choice at the end of the day. The RABA received the expressions of interest, they received the competition panels and the information that went with them. Um, so, you know, they did all the, the sort of the hard work behind the scenes, if you like, to make sure it ran smoothly, and they organised, obviously, the, the interviews at the end of the process. The competitions brought tremendous benefits. As you can see today, it's resulted in a really high quality building, which I'm sure will stand the test of time. It enabled us to choose a leading British architect. And interestingly, you know, we chose that architect before he'd won the Sterling Prize, <laughs> which has happened subsequently. Um, and I think the, the, the RABA process enabled us to concentrate on what was important to us in this project. What were the key elements that we wanted to make sure were delivered? And in this case, it was to make sure that we got a building that was very fit for purpose, but it was also of high quality, and a building that was related to the collections, the art, the art collections that we will be showing in there. And the particular thing that we were looking for was very high quality gallery spaces, as well as really good learning and education spaces, and also the, the social spaces that go with any, any contemporary gallery, the cafe, the shop, the landscape around it, the place for people to meet and just come and enjoy as well as coming to see the art. The most interesting part of the competition was that it gave us the opportunity to meet all of the shortlisted architects, um, on some of them more than once. Uh, they all came to site and we were able to uh, have that conversation with them about the project, about their responses to the site, their responses to the art collections, and you know we would already felt we got to know them even before we got to the panel meeting and making the decision. I would certainly recommend the competition process. I think the main reason is that it does make you concentrate and work out exactly what you want to achieve. And I firmly believe that a key part of any project um, is being very clear from the beginning about what the objectives of the project are, what the vision is and what the brief is. It's very well informed, it attracts attention, architects respond to it and it's very well managed. So it takes a lot of pressure off us as clients, if you like, to deal with the intricate details and it makes sure that we get them right. I think the other reason why I recommend it is, looking from our point of view, is that it resulted in a great building and the appointment of a really good architect and the best architect for our project came out of the process. So from that point of view, I would definitely recommend it, yes. I'm very proud of what we've achieved here in Wakefield. The whole team has developed and, and delivered what was in the original concept, a building that is, is next to water, a building that, that sits in the water in the same way that the, the warehouses and the mill buildings, the, the old industrial warehouse and mill buildings do, which almost sort of Venetian-like rise out of the river. Also, the gallery spaces reflect very much and the building blocks reflect very much the concept from the architect that it would be a series of trapezoidal blocks that come together to form the building. And another key part of the concept, which is very apparent today, is that from the outside of the building you can read what's inside. So the 10 blocks that make up the building reflect the 10 gallery spaces. So as you go into the gallery, you are immediately able to understand you're moving from one block to another. And that's been achieved through the design and was very much in the original concept. I think the, the final thing I would, I would highlight is the, is the use of light. And the gallery spaces are, are light filled and that is achieved through the roof light, the light slot that comes in from above the gallery, but also very strategically placed windows, which give you views into the gallery, but also out of the gallery. So you see the Wakefield City skyline, you see across to, to the Pennines. That again was very much part of, of the original concept, that it wouldn't be a white box that you disappear into, 
that it would be a building that, where you're still very much in contact with the environment around it.